Hey guys, Jenna here. Welcome to my channel where I feature tiny, unique, incredible, and sometimes wacky homes and the owners that love them. Today we're traveling to Colorado to take a tour of a DIY tiny home with some really clever ideas. Some of which I've never even seen before and I've featured hundreds of tiny house tours on this channel. The owners explain why this affordable home choice allowed them to pursue careers that maybe didn't pay well, but they love. Now, if that's not the opposite of the term house poor, then I don't know what is. If you like videos like this, make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell so that you get a notification every time I post a new video. I'm Erica. And I'm Raymond. And this is our tiny house, Das Kleine House. We're excited to show you our home today. Before we started living tiny, we were living in various rental roommate situations. It just was very frustrating to have to always pick up and move and, and relocate and rearrange our lives all the time. We found out about tiny living initially when we were living in England. We had a friend out there mention something about tiny houses and we kind of went, oh, what's, what's that? So started doing some initial research. Being able to own our own home in our early 30s and be able to take it with us anywhere if our situation changes seemed like a very feasible and realistic lifestyle for us. We've been living in our home for three years now. The whole build process for the house took about two and a half years once we actually got started. I designed everything from the ground up. Trailer made trailers out of Olathe, kind of worked with us and then came in and was basically a giant erector set, stood the whole thing up in a weekend. That in total cost us about $13,000. In total, we're at about $50,000. Finding a parking spot is definitely a challenge and has always been a challenge for tiny houses because there really isn't any zoning for them. People don't know what to do with them. We found that La Plata County, where we're at, is actually very tiny house friendly. There's about 13 tiny houses, give or take, they coming in and out. Where we're at now, with the RV hookups, it's kind of a perfect situation. This is our home, Das Kleine House, which is German for the little house. It's on a custom 26 and a half foot trailer with triple 6K axles. Let's go check out the inside. Welcome to the inside of the house. One thing that we really prioritized with our house was a big kitchen. We do a lot of cooking at home. My husband is a runner. He has a really high metabolism, so we have to have a lot of food on hand at all times. So if you'll notice, our countertop is quite long. It's about 13 feet. One thing you'll notice about the countertop is it's actually much higher than a standard countertop. So these are 40 inches tall. My husband and I are both on the tall side. So it's much more comfortable to work up a little bit higher than a normal countertop, which would sit kind of down here. We actually used epoxy to create this effect on the countertop. What I really wanted was a pour in place concrete which isn't really conducive to a tiny house, especially when it's moving, it's incredibly heavy. The epoxy was a great alternative to that. It's super lightweight, comes in a variety of colors, and you can create some really cool effects to it. So it kind of looks like concrete without all that extra weight added into it. As far as the kitchen table goes, we do store it underneath here in the counter, which is a really cool table. This came from my grandparents' house. So we put some new casters on it, and it has two leaves that pull out. So this is actually a very, very large table. Behind our table, if you pull it all the way out, 
we've turned our wheel well into the liquor cabinet. So we store, you know, our tequila, our scotch, all that good stuff under here. So it's nice and out of the way. And we can pull that out and mix up our cocktails. So moving along the countertop, we come up next to our sink. I really wanted to do a really nice large farmhouse apron front sink, but we put a little twist on it and we got this hand hammered copper sink. As you can see, it's also sitting in front of this nice large window to be able to look outside and really enjoy the view. A lot of our storage under here with the cabinets is open. We do have doors in the works. They just have not been installed yet. This is an RV style oven that runs on propane. Since the oven can be kind of tricky sometimes, we've actually started using our air fryer more. It does things like baked potatoes, french fries, pizza, all that good stuff. And it works really, really well for those kinds of food items. Opposite from where the oven is at, we have our bar area. Here we have coffee, tea set up, and this is also where we have the beer keg that Ray mentioned in the mechanical room. So we don't often have this hooked up, but it is nice to have for parties and things like that. So we have that here with the drip pan. So next to the bar, we have the fridge. So this is 9.2 cubic feet. So an apartment sized fridge. In our house, we definitely kept in mind that we needed a lot of space for storage. Not necessarily because we had a lot of stuff in the beginning, but knowing that we needed to make sure that space was available. So one of the ways that we did that was creating storage space under our stairs. Each step has different kind of cubbies and nooks to put things. On this largest one, we actually have our record player that slides out. It is a Bluetooth record player that hooks up to a speaker. This is where the wheel well is at on the other side of the trailer. So we use that to store things. Now we're in the bathroom, which as you can see is pretty small. We don't spend a lot of time in the bathroom, so we didn't feel the need to make it sort of this large luxurious space where we're gonna spend a lot of time getting ready. On this side, we do have Nature's Head composting toilet. But now that we're in more of a permanent parking situation, I think we will be switching over to a flushing toilet and hooking up to septic. Above that, we do have our toiletries cabinet. So if you open this up, everything stores very nicely in here, but you'll notice it is open on this side and that leads directly into the mechanical room. So this gives us easy access to things like fire extinguisher, fuse box, extra towels, and so on. So one of our favorite features in the house is actually here in the bathroom, the heated towel rack. We had one in our house when we lived in England and they're really amazing. They dry your towels really quickly, but it's also great when it's rainy or snowy and you're kind of soaked when you walk in, you can throw it on this guy for, you know, half an hour or so. Voila, you've got dry clothes again. So then the opposite side of the bathroom is the shower. This is also another place in the house where we used epoxy. So we just picked a different color scheme. It's sort of the dark background with the copper highlights in it. We've got a little nook in here where we keep the shampoo, soap, etc. And then we stuck with the copper pipes and a really cool copper rain shower head in here. Also, if you were to look down on the floor, we do have a penny floor, which was a lot of fun to install. It's got about $56 worth of pennies in here. So if anybody needs any change, let us know. Here we are on the living room section, which is kind of the end of the kitchen. Right here at the end, we've got these wonderful ukulele and cigar box guitars. I have zero musical talent, <laughs> but I think they're pretty and they can actually come with a nice story. It's actually autographed by Tenacious D. Kyle Glass and Jack Black, whole nine yards, you know? So we're big plant people. You'll notice throughout the house, they got plants all over. We actually found this nice little Lego one. Uh, they have a nice Lego set of different varieties of flowers. They have this one, and the next one we're gonna get is a bonsai tree, which I think would be really cool. So here in the living room, we've got our TV, kind of entertainment center. This is the part of the living room that's changed the most. It's still a work in progress. We recently added in this shelf. I'm an avid photographer. So I've got some classic cameras. This is one of my favorites. It's an old Voigtlander. 
we used to have a built-in bench couch. Man, it was one of the most uncomfortable couches you've ever sat on. We tried different foams, we tried different pillow backdrops. Just nothing seemed to work to make it comfortable. It was also an awkward height. This is a nice Ikea couch, very comfortable. It's got actually two hidden compartments, which is fantastic for us. It has this guy here popped up full of board games. And then this pulls out. Ta -da! And now we have a lame lounge night for movies, playing games, you name it. So here in the living room, we have a storage loft. The original plan for this was for it to be a office. So it didn't fit everything we needed. Now it's in storage spot, but it has this handy little ladder. So we just pop down. Now we can go up and down pretty easy. Up here we have all kinds of random storage. We have our scarfs, ukulele case, some spare books that don't really fit on our shelves. We want to pull out every now and then. Um, and then all, each of us has our own little bin. So when we need something, we would just grab the bin, pull it down and then stuck it back up here. Helps keep the space nice and organized. Well, let's head upstairs and I'll show you the bedroom. So here we are in the bedroom. It's actually 13 and a half feet long. And as you can see, I can sit up in bed, no problem. We have a queen size bed. So it gives us a little bit of space on either side. We have two windows, it creates a great breeze, gets real comfortable at night. I wanted to sleep staring at the stars. So we have two skylights. We each have our own, look up to it. It's real nice to watch the weather move in. And then here on the front side, we have our closet, which is all of our clothes. And we have some drawers to store the stuff and a small spot for the dogs when they join us in the evenings. We kind of wanted to create a visual separation between the downstairs and the bedroom. We wanted the bedroom to be a little more open because lofts tend to be a little tight. So to do that, we actually added in this dark wood. Uh, these are old fence posts. I got 300 square feet of it for like 50 bucks. On the outside here, we have a combination of wood and metal siding. We like the aesthetic of the different angles and the different textures that it provides. And then the roof is called an interlocking metal roof system. It's made out of recycled aircraft aluminum and weighs about 150 pounds. So super lightweight and it has a lifetime warranty. So definitely a good investment for us. We also have our hammock hitch something that my husband Ray designed. We love spending time out here, relaxing in the hammock, having a cocktail. One thing I really wanted in the house was a Dutch door. So having one door with the two halves and the top part can actually open up. Hello. Hi, Ray. Hello. <laughs> um, so this is just kind of a fun spot to hang out with our neighbors, have a chat. It's nice to open on these nice, warm, sunny days here in Durango, and it opens up the space so it doesn't feel so claustrophobic. Welcome to the west side of the house. Also happens to be our hitch side. On it, we have our bikes. So Durango is a super bike friendly town. And then this is kind of my little man cave or garage, store my toys. We'll load it up with a lot of fly fishing gear, some tools, beer, and my Nerf gun collection. Cause you know, the little kids around here are gonna be pests. In my little garage, I actually have a little cubby here. This is where I keep my keg storage for my beer tap inside and all my beer making supplies. So here we are on the south facing wall. This is the back side, opposite of our front door. This is what the siding originally looked like when we did it. We had attempted Shosugi Bon. I, at the time, didn't know what I was doing, so it didn't come out very well. So it's nice and faded. You can see where some of the sealant was chipping away now. And eventually we're planning on just doing a whole remodel of the siding and make it look real nice and fresh. So here we are on the front side. And here we have our sign for the house. Um, this used to be once bright and vibrant, but it's since kind of, you know, worn over the last three years. But this is a sign with the name for the house, and then it's autographed by everyone who helped us build it. So we were a DIY build. Everyone who helped do something kind of left their mark for us, so we always had a memento for them. One of the biggest questions we get, and I know there's going to be a lot of them, is what are those things on our roof? These little hooks are not for hanging chairs, hammocks, whatever. Uh, it's actually keep the snow off with that high pitch right there, especially over the door. It acts as a good snow stop, hits that. It actually does such a good job. I've got to beat the snow off with a brush in the winter or it just consistently drips. Living tiny and 
owning our own house in Durango in our 30s, we're able to go out and explore and play a little more than someone who's trying to make a giant mortgage payment for 30 years. We can take those jobs that we enjoy, may not make a ton of money, but I love what I do. Building and living in a tiny house was sort of an ideal situation for the two of us. We never really latched on to the idea of buying a traditional home, but still take pride in ownership of something. Thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.